Do you need to eat fruits and vegetables to be healthy? Probably sounds like a silly question, right? Because we've heard time and time again that fruits and vegetables are part of a healthy diet. You have to have your five servings of fruits and vegetables a day. But it's actually kind of interesting when you look at the data behind it, because the data may not support this concept that you need fruits and vegetables. I'm Dr. Bredshaw, the medical director of dietdoctor.com, and that sounds a little surprising. On the one hand, I feel a little silly even doing this video because I'm a huge proponent of vegetables, especially above ground, low carb vegetables. I eat a ton of them myself. I recommend most of my patients eat as many as they can and as much variety as they can as part of a healthy low carb diet. I think it is important, but we have to admit that there's a small subset of people who don't do well on vegetables. And we have to admit that fruits are very different from vegetables and should be considered separately. We frequently say fruits and vegetables as if it's one word or one thing, but they are two very distinct things. So we did a recent video on carnivore diet, on a study looking at uh, a plant-free diet. And it was a, you know, you can go back and look at that video. It was a low quality evidence, but you know, they understood that and it was meant to be sort of an opening of maybe we should study this some more. But I got two interesting points of feedback. Um, one was on the environmental impact and that deserves a whole nother video. So I'll do a video on that. But the second was, how can you not eat fruits and vegetables because we need fruits and vegetables to be healthy. So that's why I think we need to delve into this a little bit more. And we have an entire guide on this at dietdoctor.com. Do you need to eat fruits and vegetables? by uh, Francisca Spritzler, medically reviewed by myself and Dr. Michael Tamber. So first, let's get into this concept of fruits, okay? Are fruits the same as vegetables? Absolutely not. Um, fruits tend to be higher carb um, and less satiating than some of the higher fiber vegetables. Um, do fruits supply you with anything that you cannot get from vegetables? No. So it's clear that having a zero fruit diet is no problem whatsoever for health because whatever you want to get, whether it's vitamin C or antioxidants or whatever you want to get from fruit, you can get those from vegetables. And we go through some of the specifics in our guide. So you do not need fruit at all. Now, that being said, is fruit dangerous? Is fruit harmful? Well, for many people, it's perfectly fine, especially the low carb fruits like the raspberries, the strawberries blackberries, even some blueberries. But it's also clear, especially if you're wearing a CGM or monitoring your, monitoring your blood sugar, people with type 2 diabetes or insulin resistance, fruit can cause a significant increase in blood sugar and insulin. Um, you can do certain tricks to decrease it, eating fruit with some sort of fat, um, like with cream or with peanut butter or whatever the case may be, can blunt your blood sugar rise to a degree, but be careful because that increases the calories. So if you're trying to lower calories, uh, that then becomes at odds. But I think it's clear that fruit is not the same for everybody. And again, observational nutritional epidemiology, observational studies show that populations eating more fruit tend to do well from a health standpoint. But also, as I've said many times in these videos, that's because they're healthier at baseline and you cannot, absolutely cannot control for that in these poor quality nutritional epidemiology studies. Plus with the food frequency questionnaires and the very low hazard ratios, they're really not worth anything in terms of saying this is a healthy food. All they say is that you can eat this and still be healthy when you are otherwise healthy and have healthy lifestyle. So um, and also, we can't talk about fruit like it's one thing, right? Because again, the, the raspberries, the blueberries, the strawberries, blackberries, that's one thing. Watermelon is another thing, which by its name is mostly water. So it's a high glycemic index fruit, but not, so, not as high glycemic load, meaning for its average serving size, um, it's so much water, you're not getting that much sugar. But if you, it's easy to overeat. So if you're starting to pound it, you're going to get a lot of sugar. And dried fruits are the worst. Um, and other high sugar fruits like pineapple and so forth. Basically, these are treats. These are desserts. They are sweet for a reason. They have sugar. They have fructose. Um, so if you see fruit as, as, a, as a nice dessert, as a nice treat, okay. But if you see fruit as something you need to get at every single meal and having a huge fruit salad is a quote unquote healthy choice, that's actually not true for many, many people. So you need to know if that's right for you or not. And again, following your blood sugar is an easy way. But the thing is, there's no evidence that we actually need to eat fruit to be healthy. Um, that part, I think, is pretty clear. 
Um, there's no such thing as a fruit deficiency. And again, nothing you get from fruit that you can't get from vegetables. So the harder question, I think, is do you need vegetables to be healthy? Will you have micronutrient deficiencies? So what do vegetables give us? Well, they give us micronutrients, like I said, and they give us fiber. Now, fiber can be helpful um, as a bulking agent to increase the stress receptors in our stomach, help us feel full, um, increase short-term satiety. But if you're eating sort of high protein, moderate fat kind of diet, that's usually a high satiety diet anyway. So maybe you don't need fiber from that standpoint. Um, fiber can also help with, uh, with your stools, with your bowel movements, but this is where studies are very interesting. Some studies show improvement with more fiber and studies, some studies show worsening uh, bowel movements with more fiber. So again, we can't just make blanket comments that high fiber vegetables are good for your bowel movements, period, because that is not uh, supported by the evidence. We also can't talk about vegetables as if they're one thing. So at Diet Doctor, we have a visual guide that we'll link to below. Um, the low carb, higher fiber vegetables, like your leafy greens, um, you know, spinach and kale and lettuce and whatnot, and your cauliflower and broccoli and Brussels sprouts and green beans, uh, zucchinis and uh, bell peppers, that those, those are going to be healthier choices for just about everybody because they are lower carb, higher fiber vegetables, as opposed to some of the higher sugar, higher carb vegetables, like the root vegetables, like the, the carrots and the parsnips and the sweet potatoes and the potatoes. Now, again, observational studies, nutritional epidemiology studies show, regardless of the type of vegetables you eat, the more you eat, um, or those, sorry, let me rephrase that. Those people who eat more tend to be healthier than those people who eat less. But again, same caveats, nutritional epidemiology, they are healthier at baseline. You cannot control for that. It says nothing about the vegetables themselves being healthy. It, let's talk about randomized controlled trials because that's where you don't have the healthy user bias. That's where you know the direct impact of the vegetables. And again, why is this important? Well, it's important for that small subset of people who do not feel well and do not react well to eating plant matter. So the question is, do you need to eat plant matter to be healthy? So the randomized controlled trials are actually really interesting in the fact that they're underwhelming. And it's sort of surprising to see that because of this lore of how important fruits and vegetables are, um, that the randomized controlled trials would be so underwhelming. And we go through them um, in detail in our guide at dietdoctor.com. But let me walk you through some of the important ones here. There was a 2014 systematic review of eight randomized controlled trials that lasted between four and 52 weeks. And they, sat, they found that the people who increased their fruits and vegetables lost about 1.5 pounds more than those who ate less. Okay, so it's not nothing, but 1.5 pounds is not certainly something to write home about. Um, so maybe not that dramatic, but researchers also published a systematic review of seven different RCTs and failed to show any measurable difference in weight change between people who consumed high versus low amounts of fresh produce. So one study showed absolutely no difference. And then there was another study that showed people actually gained weight. And the key to that other, the third study where they gained weight was likely they were just adding it without cutting back other foods. So it's high carb, calories. So if you're going to add high carb calories, you probably do need to take away calories from somewhere else, or you're likely going to gain weight. And that's part of the, that's part of the issue with the way you design randomized controlled trials. What are you replacing? And like we've talked about before about these so-called quote unquote healthy whole grains, that the studies replacing refined grains with whole grains, of course, are going to show a benefit to whole grains. But the question is, what about whole grains versus no grains? That's a completely different study as opposed to replacing refined grains. So a little bit of a, a detour here, but same thing. If you're, if you're adding fruits to replace refined carbs, if you're adding vegetables to replace sugars and refined carbs, okay, you're going to see a benefit. Um, if you're adding it without subtracting anything, maybe you're not going to see a benefit as that one study showed. And there's, there's plenty more studies that we list to there. But what about diabetes and metabolic syndrome? So this is an interesting one because um, it's pretty clear that people with type 2 diabetes respond differently than people without insulin resistance or metabolic syndrome um, to sugars and to fruits. But yet some people out there are promoting high fruit diets and to, to treat type 2 diabetes. And and question is, does the evidence beyond low quality, um, poor quality nutritional epidemiology support that? And the answer is probably not. So there's a systematic review of eight randomized controlled trials. 
um, that looked at fruit and vegetable intake on people with metabolic syndrome. And really, there, there wasn't much of a difference in fasting blood sugar for people who ate more produce. Um, and again, we have to separate the fruits and vegetables here, especially when we're talking about high fiber vegetables versus the other um, higher sugar fruits and vegetables. Another randomized control trial in diabetes care, randomized people to eat two, four, or seven portions of fruits and vegetables for 12 weeks, and nobody had any improvement in their insulin resistance, depending on whichever group you were in. Now, the caveat being, these are mostly mixed diets, high-carb diets, so you're adding more fruits and vegetables too. So what would that look like for a low-carb diet? And that, that's kind of interesting, um, but it wasn't really studied. Now, most low-carb or keto studies allow above ground vegetables. If it's a keto study, you know, maybe you have to count your, your grams, but uh, for more moderate low carb, it's usually sort of as much un above ground vegetables as you want. And, you know, as we know, a number of those studies show significant improvements for type two diabetes, insulin resistance, and metabolic syndrome. Again, showing you can eat above ground vegetables and be healthy, but that's very different than saying you have to eat vegetables to be healthy. Again, we go through more of the studies in the guide. But this wouldn't be a question or problem if everybody did great by eating vegetables and, and fruits, of course. So fruits, you worry more about the sugars, but some people, even with vegetables, there's concern about oxalates, there's concern about phytates and anti-nutrients, about salicylates, about histamine. Um, some people need to eat a low FODMAP diet. Now, is this the majority of the population? No, this is, this is a, a select minority of the population. But if we're going to shout from the rooftops, you have to eat fruits and vegetables to be healthy, we better have data to back it up. And I've gotta be honest, I don't think we do. So for that small subset of people, I'm very curious to see how they do. Do we have proof that all meat plant-free diets are healthy 10, 20 years down the road? No, we don't have good evidence for that either. But we don't have evidence that it's harmful. So um, I think it's time to study it for that small group of people who get benefit by eliminating plant foods. Now, if you're a clinician or you're an individual thinking about all this saying, should I get rid of plant foods? Well. It, I think it's reasonable as, as a short-term trial in a number of people to see if you feel better, to see if it changes an autoimmune condition or you know as a form of an elimination diet and then slowly add things back to balance out the diet. My, my bias is that I do believe you should have a balanced diet with plant matter and animal matter um, in a healthy combination. But again, that doesn't mean the science proves it has to be that way. So let's be careful about how strongly we recommend things when the science maybe doesn't support it um, for all populations. All right, again, please see dietdoctor.com, the links below to the guides um, for more detail. Um, if you thought this was helpful, please give us the thumbs up and click subscribe so you'll get all the updates here for Diet Doctor News on YouTube. We'll see you next time.